Yes, of course I did. And I, they were friends of mine, all these great artists. That's where I was so lucky because I was just a little kid looking up to these people, real, real catatonic, awestruck with their talent. And not only did I get to see it, but I got to see it close up right on the side of the curtain, on the side of the wings. And I got to know these great artists. These were the best entertainers in the world. They were showstoppers. And I would have to go on stage sometime after them, you know. So it was amazing. But the thing is that at first, I remember Tito and Jermaine, you were like so little and so small. Um, you were part of the Jackson 5. At what point did you realize that you were a showstopper? You know, when you when you have a special ability, you don't realize it because you think everybody else has the same gift that you have. So you don't realize it. When I used to sing at such a young age, people were so inspired by my singing, and they loved it. And I didn't realize why they were clapping or crying or, or start to scream. I really, truly, truly didn't, Jesse. And it... it um, I think it was uh, just later on in life when people would come to me and say, you know, do you realize you have a special gift or you have a special talent? And I just remember from my mother, who's very religious, always telling us to always thank God, thank Jehovah God for your talent, your ability. You know, it's not from, it's not our doing it's from above so we were always humbled by people who would come with accolades or you know you know adulation whatever it is you know and it was a beautiful thing when, when did you uh stop going to school formally oh that was very young i think it was oh boy I think the fifth, probably the fifth grade, fourth or fifth, I think. And then I had tutoring uh, the rest of my life because we did so many tours and concerts and TV shows and then all the albums and the recordings because you, you, we would have three hours of schooling, then we would do the concerts, and then we would travel to another state or another country. And then by that time, you know, we'd do some concerts again. Then I would, it would be time to record the next J5 album. Then after the J5 album, it's time for another Michael Jackson album. So I was in my youth, as a little kid, I was always busy. I remember across the street from Motown recording studio, there was a park. And I used to hear the roar of the, the kids and the throwing of the football and the basketball. And I remember going to the studio every day, and I would, I would feel kind of sad because I wanted to go to that park. But I knew I had a, a different job to do, you know, so we'd go in and make the records all day until late at night. And you go to sleep and you're up for the next day, just the same regimentation. But to, that, to that extent, you, you missed a certain body of childhood experience. How did you compensate for this loss of ordinary child, childhood experience? Well, I, I, it's true, I, I didn't have a childhood. Um, but when you don't have a childhood, like people like myself and other child stars, um, I would think you, you try to compensate for the loss. So later on, you try to catch up. And that's why you see, like, you may see it theme park or amusement rides or that kind of environment at my home. But I like to do it to help other children who are less fortunate than I am. You know, kids who are terminally ill, kids with diseases, poor children from the inner cities, you know, the ghettos, to let them see the mountains or to see go on the rides or to, to watch a movie or to have some ice cream or something. The other thing, of course, that was different about you, Michael, you did have a family. How many of, how many was in the family? The, the immediate Jackson family? Yeah. It, it was originally ten of us. There's <clears throat> there's nine. There's nine. And um, uh, my mother, Catherine, and Joseph Jackson are still alive. And uh, we were all born in Gary, Indiana. Well, uh, in that in that setting, did, uh, did Tito and Jermaine beat up on you and give you some normal childhood experience of being a little brother? It yeah, was well, being on tour. <laughs> like, we would go to Miami, and we would, you know... We would be able to use the beaches, and um, but we were so popular at the time. Wherever the Jackson Five would go, there would be mob scenes. We couldn't go in a shopping center or anywhere. It would be just kids screaming, and so we had hit hit records back to back to back. We were playing these sellout big arenas across America, and so it was difficult. So we get, we did have a chance to have some fun, but in the hotel there would be a pillow fight in the hotel, or if we wanted to swim after hours, you know, we would swim in the pool downstairs, you know, that type of thing. Who would win the pillow fights? 
Uh, pretty much Tito or, or Jackie. <laughs> they were the oldest. <laughs> Given all that you've kind of kind of gone through and this kind of phenomenal rise, the 